Today I'm going to be sharing with you a script that I've written for Blender to create random terrain. There's lots of uses for random terrain in your game. Um, you can use it to create an area that you can wander around in. Blender's not that fast a game engine, it doesn't have a lot of the capabilities of a, a modern engine. Um, so using procedural capabilities like generating a random level or adding random monsters is a good way to uh, increase the playability of a Blender game. It means that you know you don't have to write uh, 20 levels and create 100 uh, rooms for your game. You can just create 10 or 5 rooms and one or two different levels and then use uh, a randomizer to create a new kind of level each time. Now how can we do that? One way that to do that is to create random terrain. And today we're going to be using this script. When you use scripts in Blender you have to uh, it's a good idea to click here AB. This will highlight the script to make it easier to understand. In fact for this script you don't need to understand anything that's happening here. I'll give you the details. Um, first of all we create an array. An array is like an imaginary object. Uh, in this case it represents the Z position of each uh, vertice in your in your mesh and also the color and alpha of that. We don't really need the alpha because I'm pretty sure it can't change in game anyway but it's good to change, good to look at that. Uh, after that we add some hills and we smooth those hills. It's important. All we're doing really when we add the hills is add some high points to the map. Smoothing them out creates real hills. Then uh, we add some valleys. I've created a script which will uh, create a valley that stretches from one side of the, the mesh to another side and uh, can add that many many times or just one or two times. It's up to you. And then finally we use the script to set the vertices of the, of the mesh. We can change the colors as well later on. I may be improving this script to uh, add colors to things such as valleys or hilltops or uh, slopes and things like that or just add random uh, colors to the ground. Mm. Uh, so you don't need to know any of this. An important thing if you're making your own script is this one here, own reinstance physics mesh. If you don't do this, then you won't be able to actually interact with the with the mesh in game. Uh, we have to use this. Also, for some strange reason, when I when I created these meshes, uh, things fell through them very easily. And the only thing that seemed to stop that was by changing the state of the mesh. I don't know why that works. Um, it, this script is only run once on startup so it shouldn't really affect it. But anyway, that's a, that's a fix for the script. So you don't have to worry about that. Uh, you don't need to change anything in the script if you're going to be using it. All you need to change if you want to use this is the properties of your mesh. Um, let's start out by checking out hills. Hills are the basic aspect of this this mesh. Let's uh, press P to play and you can see it creates the random mesh. Uh, it's nothing special, just uh, a few rolling hills. It's a little bit boring as far as meshes go. Um, if this was your random level then players might think, oh I'm in a desert or you know it's not that interesting. We can change the height of the hills though. Let's uh, make them much taller. There we go, a much more mountainous area. Uh, I recommend not changing the height too high um, in in proportion to the, the, the length and the width of your mesh because otherwise it'll be unrealistic and uh, you know, if the height isn't that high, then players won't have that much need to go near the edge of the mesh. I've added a black border around the mesh, 
so that uh, when you're testing these things you can find the edge quite easily as you're wandering around. Uh, you'll have to set up something in game to stop your players from walking off the edge. All you really need to do is make sure that all of your uh, objectives and things happen in the middle of the mesh here, in the middle of the level. If you've got an objective which happens right on the edge of the mesh, then the player is going to go to the edge of the mesh. That's just the, the way people are. But if you don't need to go there, then they won't go there. Alright, now let's uh, change some more parameters. You can change the spacing. This puts the hills further apart. But these hills are uh, regularly set. So uh, as you change the spacing further apart, it becomes obvious that they're random, regularly spaced. You can uh, get around that by increasing the height and increasing the H smoothing. This is the hill smoothing. The amount, the number of passes that it uses to smooth these out. If you do that, then you should get a mesh which isn't too regular. Mm, we can make it really smooth and really high. Uh, the more it smooths, the more the hills are worn away, like erosion. So you'll have to increase the height much higher if you increase the smoothing higher as well. So that took a long time to generate, but it's generated a very mountainous terrain. Our hills create individual hills. We've got another function for creating uh, connected hills later on. I'll show you that one. Okay, now we've we played around with hills. Let's set that to a normal sort of setting. There we go. Nothing special about that. Now let's add a valley. One valley. The valley runs randomly from one edge to another edge. Um, each time you generate the terrain, the valleys are generated randomly. there's nothing to stop the valley from being right on the edge it might generate right in the middle, it might generate right on the edge uh, it's random, that's the one of the things that happens with random things now you can add more valleys each time you increase the valley number it'll run an extra pass of the valley maker so here are four valleys you can increase the V smooth, this is the amount that the valleys are smoothed and you can increase the depth of the valleys. Uh, this will make them more have more of an impact on your mesh. There we go. Uh, a lot of valleys in there. Mm, you can invert the valleys. Instead of making it a minus number, if you make it a positive number, now the valleys will be changed from valleys into ridges. Ridge-like mountains. Um, you don't want to set it too high. There we go. This can create an interesting terrain for a player because the areas in between the valleys are like little rooms. So if you're wandering around looking for random monsters, um, then you can give the, the, the thing that spawns the monsters a, a ray that will point to the player. So it will only spawn the monsters if the player is in range and the player can see the spawning point. Um, or the spawning point can see the player. So if you did that, then once you wander into one of these big valley areas, um, monsters can spawn in there and then when you go into another valley area then some more monsters will spawn and uh, it limits the amount of the level that your player can visit at any one time okay that's that's basically it um, can increase the height and make some more valleys And you can get a nice interesting terrain uh, with some valleys and some mountains. Uh, 
you know, it's up to you how you want to use this. Okay, uh, final word. You can change the resolution or the size of this mesh any way you like, but you have to change the properties. So I'm going to show you how to do that now. Uh, let's start by subdividing this plane. So now we've made it more uh, high resolution. And let's make it twice as large as well. Now look in the transform properties. Look at the dim number. 40. So we need to increase the size to 40. 40 blender units. And we need to increase divert the size to uh, match what we're using on the mesh. But with a high resolution mesh you can get some nicer results. You can see it's much more detailed. Mm, you know later on I'm going to be developing some more uh, things for this using my own game. Uh, things to add for example add settlements to the valleys. Uh, the settlements or the, the houses will be added only in the valley areas. There's lots you can do. Um, by changing the script you can add a lot more versatility to this. Uh, it will be possible for example to change it so that um, only, only hills grow on the mountains. Um, when you're writing the script uh, you can add color to certain areas so for example if an area is very high you could change the the red of that color of that vertice and then when your game is starting up it can look for red in that area and then it'll just uh, only place hills uh, only place trees and things in the red areas okay so that's the script that's what it does If you change the resolution, it takes longer to generate, so just bear that in mind. And if you change the size, you'll have to change the numbers as well to uh, cope with that. Because, you know, changing uh, 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 a mountain which is four units high on a, s on a low res mesh, on a small mesh, uh, will be big, but on a big high resolution mesh it's not going to be big. So as you can see, uh, there's lots of things you can do with this. It would be good for a flying game, uh, like a flight simulator or something. Give you an interesting area to fly over. Okay, thanks, I hope you enjoy the script.